like Justin Trudeau was on Colbert, humiliating Justin Trudeau. <laughs> like Colbert asked him questions and he just humiliated himself for a whole 18 minutes. Anyways, take a look at the face of Chrystia Freeland in this video and then listen to what she says afterward. Trust Quebecers. They understand that they don't have common sense. And what, well, we have been a government that have been, has been there for Quebecers and in the digital sector. Our government is happy to get advice from Canadians across the country. But let's talk about who the Conservatives get their advice from. They get advice on the cost of living from a law blahs lobbyist. They get advice on foreign policy and on Ukraine from Elon Musk and Tucker Carlson. And they get advice on women's rights from misogynists and the far right. Yet, their advice for, on foreign policy from Elon Musk and Tucker Carlson, where do you get that crap? Do people actually believe this? I, w I hope not, because that's stupid. Give the devil his due, what's their rationale? What would you imagine a reasonable argument for their complaints is? Um, well, that it's a really tough time in Canada right now. People, people are hurting. People are having trouble paying for groceries, paying for rent, uh, filling up the tank. Uh, there's a, a lot of comparable. Anxiety. He's trying to explain why Canadians don't like him, and then he starts talking about the macro economy economic outlook is slightly more positive than the United States right now on a macro level, but people don't feel it when they're buying for groceries. So there's a lot of frustration. And that's one of the reasons why, even though our economy is by sort of macro metrics doing very well. He's trying to use words that he thinks most people don't understand to try and look smart. People are taking a lot out on, on me for understandable reasons. I've been, I've been here and I've been steering us through all these things and, and people are sometimes looking at change. He put us in all these things that he stirred. That's pretty much what he meant. Teacher and, and among other things, and you said that you just didn't see your future in politics. Yeah. What changed? Um, well... <sighs> Did you see how he brushed his nose like a cocaine addict? Who does that? If you didn't know, CTV News aired a report about Pierre Polyev. And the report showed Pierre Polyev saying something that he didn't actually say. And it made it look like Pierre Polyev was calling for a non-confidence election because of the dental care plan. They fabricated a sentence to actually make it fit their narrative. You can't get more fake news than that. The TV News issued an apology to Pierre Polyev, which was a good apology, but at the same time, even that apology is misleading itself. Broadcast, we presented a comment by the official opposition leader Pierre Polyev that was taken out of context. It left viewers with the impression that conservative non confidence motion was to defeat the Liberals' dental care program. In fact, the conservatives' carbon tax. A misunderstanding during the editing process resulted in this misrepresentation. We unreservedly apologize to Mr. Polyev and the Conservative Party of Canada. We regret this report went to air in the manner. It did. They say in their apology a misunderstanding during the editing process. There was no misunderstanding. You spliced three videos together to make one sentence, extracted the audio of that new video, and added it to a real video of Pierre Polyev removing the actual real audio of that video. Have them to demand that they apologize for the malicious nature of the editing, to admit to a malicious intent here. I said, to demand that they apologize for the malicious intent here, like there was no malicious intent. You changed completely the narrative and you actually created evidence to fit your own narrative. And that's difficult for a news agency to accept. I'm not sure that we should wave it away as just a mistake because this is not a misattribution. Uh, it's not even taking part of the same sentence and applying it in a different context. Yep. This is taking a full paragraph, a variety of sentences that Pierre Polyev said, taking bits and pieces from each sentence to craft a new sentence. Yeah. That is journalistic malpractice. Okay, so, so just, and, and I'm not defending this, I'm explaining this. The sentence that Pierre Polyev said is, uh, that's why it's time to put forward a motion for a carbon tax election. For whatever reason, they spliced together different things he said in that scrum to create the sentence, that's why we need to put forward a motion. Now, it's not like it was changed to him saying something outrageous. It's not a sentence he uttered. 
Uh, it does not say it's about a carbon tax election. And in the way it was presented in the story, it makes it sound like he wants an election to stop dental care. Correct. So I get why they feel they're taken out of context and CTV admitted to that and yeah. apologized for it. But the suggestion... They removed it's time to, from what he was saying, added the audio of him saying we need from another video and removed the end of the sentence for a carbon tax election. They completely changed the whole sentence. Apology the same day for something that is so egregious that action to be taken is not going to be enough uh, when we're talking about the table stakes of not favorable coverage, fair and balanced coverage. And that's all conservatives are asking for. They're asking for fair coverage. They're not asking for glowing reviews. They just want to be the, fa the facts to be reported as they are. So I don't think that it is, mm. you know, delving into conspiracy theory. We had three separate sentences. A Frankenstein sentence emerge as a result. That deserves to be called out. And I think that should be called out regardless of who says it in the House of Commons or which journalistic yep. entity makes such a bad decision. But you're making people believe on CTV News that he was calling for a non-confidence vote to remove dental care. So you're making it look like Pierre wants to remove dental care when he never said he was going to remove the, the dental care plan. He says he wants to remove the carbon tax. Explicitly the carbon tax. Look at what the NDP posted on X, Justin Trudeau's liberal climate plan. Buy a pipeline, give more handouts to big oil and gas, protect big oil and gas companies from paying their fair share, delay $15 billion in climate funding while the planet burns, fail to meet every single climate target. You voted for every part of that climate plan. You're making that climate plan happen. <laughs> like, make that make sense. Pierre Polyev made a video where he explains where who uh, came up with the nickname Sellout Singh. Let's take a look at this. The nickname was actually created by Sikhs who were criticizing Jagmeet Singh. Uh, and uh, Jagmeet Singh has sold out Canadians. He said he would be a voice for workers and then he signed on to keep Justin Trudeau in power in order to get his $2.2 million pension. So here we are, we have to wait for an election until next year gets his $2.2 million pension so that he can buy his fancy watches, cars, and Versace bags. I think the Liberals and the NDP, they really cared about Sikhs, they would actually focus on that rather than on protecting Jagmeet Singh uh, from criticism, legitimate criticism for his appalling betrayal of, the, of uh, Canadians that he was supposed to represent. I don't know if you saw it, but I made a video at one point where I said Jagmeet was a traitor of Sikhs. I didn't know the Sikhs created the nickname Sellout Singh. <laughs> Who said it? Was it you? No. You sure? Who said it? Was it you? No. Was it you or not? If it was me, I'd admit it. You sure it's not you? No. 100%. You're a coward. You're not going to say it to my face. That's what's up. 